Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we have a follow up to my recent video on hand filing. We had a great comment on there from an overall optimism asking what do we do in cases where there's a sharp curve and I said as soon as I get one I'll show it to you. Now we're working on our PAs, that's not the best one I know, but that you can see where it kind of gets a little bit muddy at the apex. When you look at the CDCC T T T today, Junior, which has a few extra letters there. A nice job, Scott. <laughs> you can definitely see the curvature here, especially in the side view. Um, that nice S curve, almost a little bit of resorption at the apex as well, which we'll go into. As far as the access, it's pretty boring, just an MOD composite there. We're going to start off by taking the tooth out of the bite because it has that already MOD composite and it's going to have a root canal. I know it's going to get a crown. This is a good way to just make sure you protect your work. It doesn't take you too long to take it out of the bite and it's going to minimize the amount of occlusal pain they'll have afterwards as well as make it a little easier for the general dentist. So I'm going to start off with a workhorse burr. I said uh, this is actually my third take because I said work hurt like I screwed up the take <laughs> saying it multiple times and you'll see that I'm having a little bit of trouble getting my initial kind of point down inside there. So trying to go back and forth I do know that this is going to be a two canal case based on the comb beam but whenever I have problems with the actual the initial kind of access, I'm going to switch to the EG3. One thing you want to do is use the long axis of the tooth to line it up. That's what I was doing right there. And this is a really skinny arrowhead shape. And so it does a great job of penetrating into the tooth. You saw where I dropped down there into the actual canal. And I'm going to switch back to the workhorse to do the rest of the access, kind of connecting the buccal lingual and doing my trough. So at that point, access is pretty much done. And we just got to rinse it out and we'll start the initial process of filing. Now, because I know this is an S curve, I am going to start with a 6C file, and I'm going to put a little bit of a bend on there. And I use generally just use my fingers and do a pretty large gross bend to start it. Um, I do have an endo bender that I will do for fine things if I need to, but I find I don't have to use it too, too often. You can see the tooth is dead there, just showing that the tooth was necrotic. And so I'm going to start off with a 2006, and uh, it went to length. <laughs> So I know in that video it said, oh, I'd be scared to take it down to length, but it gave me no resistance and I took it to length. So there you go. There's your hand filing video once again. I promise I will do one on actual hand filing once I have a case. But I just I was laughing so hard because I was going to record it specifically for this commenter of, hey, here's how you handle S curves. And I was expecting to have to do more hand filing and it dropped to length. So <laughs> the rest of the video is going to be pretty much a very boring traditional root canal. It is done quickly. This is a uh, endo uncut. So the only cuts that you see are to stabilize the footage, because if I didn't do this, you would all be motion sick. But it is a premolar that's done in under 10 minutes. So it, it can be very efficient to do these, even if it does have a decent sized curve on there. And you see the 1704 dropped beautifully to length, no issues uh, whatsoever there. Estimate was 21 and ended up being 21. So I, you can see I drop it pretty much down to the stopper, so about a millimeter and a half short, uh, just to kind of adjust for what I took off the occlusion. But we're checking the working length here. This took longer than anything else. I'm still trying to figure out a way to make this slightly more efficient. Um, not, I think I forgot to turn it on. I forgot to put the lip clip on. That's why there's a slight delay there. So uh, actually having the room ready, Scott, would be a great way to make it more efficient. <laughs> but this sent, sometimes this is the longest part of the procedure is actually getting the working length because you do want to make sure this is accurate here. And uh, you can see the slight bend on the file. I do put a slight bend on all my files before they go into the canal. This was a thing I learned way back at Apices, like my first month of residency, John West came out with him at his, you know, B1 times a thousand smile and showed us that when you hand file, you do want to put that gentle curve. And so if you notice for the vast majority of my cases, every time I put a file into there, there's going to be a gentle curve on there because it does make a huge difference for getting around curves. And you don't want to put a completely straight file in unless you are trying to, you know, create your own path. So gentle curves are the way to go. And you can see with that, we are pretty much done with the rotary use. So that was it. Uh, what are we, four minutes in, give or take? Yeah, so not too, too bad as far as that. Um, we're just going to do the long rinse here, get all that out. Triton's a really nice material for this sort of thing. It really does. I, I think it does dissolve better. The SEM stuff that's been coming out shows that it's just wonderful as far as, you know, dissolving tissue and killing things and making it... Uh, I wish I didn't like it so much because it is a lot more expensive than just regular bleach and EVTA, but 
what you're going to do. <laughs> so doing the rinse here, and this isn't sped up. This is just taking its sweet time, getting all the way down to the bottom. And what I tend to do is leave about half a cc so I can rinse out after I use the activator. Now, do I think the activator makes a difference? No. I do think it makes the final x-ray look prettier, though. It does remove more. I don't know. I've, I've done back in residency, and this was you know 10 years ago. I did notice a difference in the quality of the final image when I used an activator and it really does not take that long or doesn't cost that much to do. We get the tips from eBay and it, you know, takes what, five seconds, 10 seconds to just kind of get things a little bit more clean. It makes me feel better inside <laughs> after my last video where I say that bacteria don't matter. That's a fun one. Um, but by the way, bacteria don't matter until they do. That's what, that's what the, if you guys want a full video on my thoughts on endo, you know, bacteria and biofilms and all that please let me know i can that'll probably have to be a lecture to the residents because it's going to be a longer one here but as far as the fill on this we're going to use the squirt technique i have no qualms about taking it around a curve that's exactly what this is designed for i'd, I'd rather use the squirt technique in a case like this than use something like a cone because i know that if as long as i have a nice clear glide path with the 20k file the gutta percha is going to flow if I were to use a cone, it could easily get bound up along the way. So this is one where a squirt technique is a perfect option for you here. Just showing the ex the images that I take and send off to the uh, referring dentist. There's been a few uh, questions about photography along the way. And I think it's important to make sure you have high quality images to send off to show the work that you're doing. Um, just to show you know, that you as a specialist are doing work that's of a higher quality and caliber. Obviously, if you want to make a video and join me on YouTube, please do. The, the, the water's warm and there's a lot of space in the pool, so come on over. <laughs> but for those of you who don't have a camera, it's a really good way to increase your referrals and just kind of show what you can do that's different. So we're using a squirt technique here. Nothing really that crazy as far as the obturation. Um, you know, with the pressure, I'm not going to press too, too hard here. I, I get it down probably about 14 millimeters until it starts to bind. Um, do I do go back and forth here. They do. It's a type two canal system for sure. But you do want to with those kind of go back and forth and make sure that there's no voids because oftentimes you can have if you push on the palate, it'll come up the buckle and vice versa. And so you want to make sure that it is well sealed on both sides. And then this is a referral who would want it. They wanted to restore the tooth themselves. So I'm going to do a more traditional up to the orifice and they can decide if they want a post or not. Um, generally, they're not going to do a post on a case like this. I would recommend it for snap off failures, but that's a that's a topic for my restoration one, which I'm still working on, by the way. That one's probably going to be ready in middle of next year would be my guess based on the timeline, but it does take some time to do some of those research. And I do have other videos that I need to or presentations I need for the residents. Anyway, that's pretty much it as far as the obturation here. I'm going to use the Pac Mac. When you take this down, remember it's not flexible. So you see, I'm only gonna take it down maybe about 10, 12 millimeters. You do not wanna take this beyond that S curve because it will snap instantly. That's a just bad day for everybody involved. <laughs> um, you can see it did compact down nicely. That's the whole point of the Pac-Mac, that little void uh, in the orifice right there. That's where the Pac-Mac was able to push more gutta percha down. And so that's why we use it in these cases. It really does do a nice job of filling in all those voids. And do a little bit of final cleanup here. Make sure those orifices are orify. Or I always have trouble with this one. Would we say orify orifices? I think it's orifices. Anyway, get that nice and cleaned off. Do that final picture here. And then one thing I do on these cases where I do flatten it off. I don't think I've shown this often, but I do like to take the barrel burr and just go around the side and make sure all those right angles are nice and smooth. It's a nice thing, you know, very demure, very very demure, very mindful. <laughs> My staff said I had to use that in a video, so there you go. There's your demure joke and. I'm going to smooth off those right angles so that it's not sharp on their tongue. Anyway, there's the final. Uh, not super happy with the final x-ray there, but notice that there was that little space right at the mesial. That's where it almost looked like there was some resorption. Not sure if that's from five, but regardless, we were able to get around the S-curve. Everything looks good there. So thank you again to Niveral Optimism for recommending this topic. I do appreciate you all. Uh, just a reminder, leave a comment. I do respond to all of them, and I try to make videos based off of the comments. So if you haven't commented before, I promise I'm not going to yell at you. Very demure. And <laughs> thank you all so much for watching, and I'll talk to you all next time.